chat uh, bridge smash the carabom car of it Gumargo, to ask you on call. I just want to read, um, I'm not trying to pull at people's heartstrings, but rather to show the reality uh, for the children in Walkinstown who are facing the loss of their teacher. Um, I had a, a, a few quite emotional emails sent to me from the kids. This girl is called Mika, and part of our letter says, we don't have the 230 students we expected, and our fifth and sixth classes will be squished, which is a great word kids use, squished into one fifth class. Not everyone can manage to go to a private school or a school that is farther away from their area. The accommodation prices are getting higher and higher in this area, so we can't blame the parents if they have to move or if they want to move. One of our teachers will lose her job and our education could be affected. And this one is from Grania. As a pupil with dyslexia, it will be hard for me to work with more students in my class and my teacher will not be able to help myself and the other sixth class girls. We have confirmation this year, so it will be even harder for my teacher because she will have fifth and sixth in one small room. My school has very cl small classrooms and can barely fit 23 girls into one small class, so imagine 32 girls into one small class. Um, you know, and people of my vintage will remember and look back at photos from when you were a kid and you'd be, the teacher be in the middle and there'd be a sea of kids around you because class sizes in the 60s were up to 50 kids and thank God we've moved on from that but I really do think that to, to uh, take a, a measure that's going to increase a class size from 23 to 32 or 30 or 28 which is what 4 into 3 will do if we reduce uh, the classes by four, from 4 teachers to 3 we're going to maximise the number of students in it on top of that you have to think of the age of these girls they play camogie, they play instruments they do all sorts of dance classes and stuff after school so they bring their gear with them and the stuff is left in the classroom and so really when the other deputies mention health and safety issues, it is a concern. And my concern is that we handed a letter uh, to Minister Bruton here last week, the three deputies that are speaking on this, appealing to him to think about this. But I'm sure it doesn't mean a thing to him because he's up to his eyeballs with the ASTI strike. But also there's an official somewhere in Athlone that's ticking the box that says this people have applied for exceptional accommodation difficulties. They don't fulfil the criteria. So no, the teacher has to go. So Miss O'Brien has to leave there on Friday. The girls are distraught today. They're emotional, as are their parents. And they should be g going towards their midterm break with a sense of glee and looking forward to Halloween. Instead, they're massively disappointed. Um, I want to show you that map. That was given to me by the principal. It's basically part of the South Central area. And the pink dots represent Desh schools. The large black dot represents the School of the Assumption. So you can see the area is surrounded with Desh schools, and rightly so, because it's considered economically disadvantaged. The Assumption doesn't have Desh status. So it is always uh, sort of underscores in terms of the pupil-teacher ratio. Now, I just think it's really unfair that the officials in that loan don't take this opportunity to actually send a kigaret, that's what we used to call them, into the school and examine the space that these kids have to uh, study, learn, and, and the teachers indeed have to work in. I think that needs to be done with a sense of urgency. And I'd like you to explain, can it be done and how can we do more to make sure it's done? Because anybody who visits those classrooms and sees the kids packed in with their gear, and their teacher will realise this is not just about pleading for an extra teacher, it is a genuine health and safety issue in relation to the school. But more importantly, those kids deserve, like anyone else, like uh, Mika mentioned, those who can afford to go to private or other schools, they deserve equal uh, opportunity in education. Right. And they're not getting it because somebody in that loan ticked the wrong box. So please, Minister, could we have an instruction that at loan actually come down and visit the school and listen to the case that's been made rather than treating it as bits of paper that they tick boxes on? Uh, um, I would like to thank the, the three deputies, Deputy um, Snoddig, uh, Deputy Smith and Deputy Collins, for, for, for raising uh, this issue um, in relation to the staffing of Assumption Girls School in Walkinstone. Um, and to acknowledge that this, you know, these are very difficult issues, uh, and I know from my own constituency and Deputy O'Brien's constituency, there is uh, often a difficulty, particularly in, in, in areas that have a high density of, of DESH schools for schools that have similar issues that, but aren't perhaps um, 
themselves de designated uh, as desk schools and I know in particular the great work that's done uh, by parents committees working uh, in conjunction with school authorities. Um, the criteria used for the allocation of teaching posts is published annually uh, and the key factor for determining the level of staffing resources provided at individual school level uh, is the staffing schedule for the reg relevant school year and pupil en enrolments, as you'll be aware, for the previous 30th of September. Um, the staffing schedule is an objective and transparent method for treating all schools uh, equally uh, in relation to the allocation uh, of classroom teachers. Uh, in the budget 2016, uh, a, a one-point improvement to the primary staffing schedule um, was announced, which reduced the average pupil-teacher ratio to that of 27 to 1, uh, and the revised improved staffing schedule and the circular which outlines the staffing arrangements for schools uh, is also available on the department's website. Uh, the new uh, arrangements have uh, been implemented for the 2016-17 school year and prior to this year uh, classroom teachers were allocated to primary schools on the basis of an average as you will be aware of 28 to 1. Uh, the staffing arrangements also includes the provision whereby schools experience rapid increases in, in, in enrolments can apply for additional permanent mainstream posts on developing grounds uh, using projected enrolment for the following September, which in this case uh, would have been September 2016. Uh, your school um, uh, was initially due in accordance with the published staffing arrangements uh, for the 2016-17 school year to have seven classroom teachers based on its September 2015 enrolment of 182 pupils. Uh, the school applied for de developing school status on the basis of a projected enrolment of 234 pupils for September 2016, and on the basis of the projected enrolment, the school was granted approval of two developing posts on a provisional basis. And these posts were approved up to um, 28th of October, uh, pending confirmation uh, of the required enrolment uh, achieved on the 30th of September 2016. The school actually um, achieved an enrolment of 228, uh, and this enrolment is sufficient for the retention of one uh, of the developing posts. And as a result, uh, the school will have a mainstream staffing uh, of eight classroom teachers for 2016-17. Um, so as set out in the staffing arrangements, the second development post, which was provis provisionally approved um, pending confirmation of actual uh, enrolments, is, uh, as you have said, due to be suppressed on the 28th of October uh, of this year. Um, the staffing arrangements also provide for an appeals me mechanism for the school to submit an appeal under certain criteria to an independent appeals board. Uh, the school submitted an appeal uh, to the October meeting of the primary staffing appeals board. Um, as you know, a school must demonstrate to the appeals board satisfaction uh, sorry, a school must demonstrate to the Appeals Board satisfaction why an additional teaching post is warranted under criteria uh, outlined in Circular 7 2016. Uh, decisions are made by the Appeals Board on the basis of the information that is provided to them uh, by the school. Uh, the Staffing Appeals Board considered the appeal made by the school and were satisfied that the appeal put forward by the school did not unfortunately warrant a second teaching post in accordance with the circular. Uh, the Board of Management has been notified uh, in this regard. Um, just to say, the Primary Staffing Appeals Board operates independently of the Minister for Education and its decision uh, is final. Um, um, and just one last paragraph. Based on the enrolment uh, of 222 pupils and taking into consideration the staffing schedule for the next year, I can come back again. Okay, thanks. Uh, um, I know the Minister isn't here, but I really find it very difficult to accept that it is not a function of the Minister to interfere with the Primary Staffing School's Appeal Board and that the decision is final. I mean, I think that's a bit harsh, and it would beg the question, why do we have Ministers if they can't uh, intervene in a situation that deserves a sort of crisis attention? 
And I have to remind you, and I, I wish when you do talk to uh, Minister Bruton, that you will make it clear to him, they did not appeal this on the grounds of looking for DESH status, they appealed it on the grounds of exceptional accommodation difficulties, which puts it into a health and safety category. Now, any of us in this House, whoever uh, in an ordinary workplace and a member of a trade union, would know that there are guidelines about the space in which you work and the health and safety implications that go with this. Why are the same guidelines, which actually say under the rules of the national schools, that for each person in the classroom there should be 15 square feet? <clears throat> for each person in these classrooms, should they move to 32, 30 and 28 pupils per teacher and per class, there will be 5.16 square feet. That's a complete breach of their own rules. Now, if they're prepared to live with breaches of their own rules on the grounds of health and safety of children, then maybe we need to go to Catherine Sapone, the Minister for Children, with this, or appeal to the Children Ombudsman for this, because I can see a situation where children's health and safety is being put at risk because of a decision that's made in the absence of a clear examination of what's been asked. And I am asking you to please go back to Minister Bruton and tell him that the school who are writing to him to find out why were they torn down? Why do you not see that on the grounds of exceptional uh, accommodation difficulties they have a cast iron case? And please explain the rationale for the decision to say no, end of story, decision is final. It's not good enough. This is the 21st century. These are kids who have a lot to gain, a lot to offer, and uh, we are discriminating, literally discriminating against them. They're being impacted by the housing crisis because families are moving out, and they're being further impacted Remind now our... by the policies of the, the uh, Department of Education, which I've just pointed out, are breaching their own rules. Uh, just, to say, just to say again that you know, I, mean, I fully empathise all of us who are uh, politicians, particularly those who, who, you know, who represent areas with a significant number of uh, DESH schools and in disadvantaged areas have been through many such cases. The government is aware uh, of the difficulties we are working through. You have seen the, uh, the changes in the pupil-teacher teacher ratios and uh, as our country recovers it is an absolute uh, priority to, to ensure that, that more of that happens uh, in, in the future. Um, but just again to, to, to re-emphasise re that the staffing arrangements um, uh, and the, the process with respect uh, to schools uh, is, is, is independent uh, and it is important to respect both the independence of the appeals process uh, and the application of staffing arrangements for schools generally uh, which do have to be implemented in a fair uh, and a consistent uh, manner. Um, um, the Primary Staffing Appeal Board uh, is uh, independent uh, to the Minister for Education uh, and its decision is final, but based on an enrolment of 222 pupils and taking into consideration the staffing schedule for the next school year, uh, Assumptions, uh, Assumption Girls School uh, in Walkenstown will have an entitlement uh, to eight classroom teaching posts with effect uh, from September uh, 2017. Uh, thank you, deputies. Thank you, Minister. Uh, we now move to item 23. It's the Judicial Appointments Commission Bill uh, 20.